Hello ladies and gentlemen! Last week I made a video about a swimming house where I basically used the scroll direction in the hotbar as an input for the movement controls. I made a generalized data pack for this detection mechanism in case any other map makers want to use it and I thought I'd quickly show you in a separate video. Just download the data pack from my website linked below and put it into the data packs folder of your world. If you now reload and scroll through your hotbar, you should get an output in the chat. Of course, a same message is not too exciting, so let me show you how to customize the data pack. Just navigate to the functions folder of the data pack and you will find a scroll left and scroll right function there. If you open them up, you can write any command of your choice that will now be executed whenever you switch inventory slots. For those of you who want to know how it works, here's a quick explanation. Don't be scared, it is extremely simple. First of all, I created a scoreboard objective called SDD last slot. Let's ignore the first block for now. In the second one, you can see that depending on which slot the player currently has selected, the scoreboard objective is updated accordingly. So if he selects the first slot, which has an index of zero, his score will be set to zero. If he selects the second one, the score will be set to one and so on. Before that happens, we perform another test, this time without updating the score though. For example, the player selects the first slot, which means he will call a function called scroll direction slot zero. In this function, we simply test for all slots except for slot zero. If we assume the player still has that same slot selected, nothing happens. But let's say we scroll to the right now. What happens in the next tick? Well, since this test is performed before the score is updated, the same function is triggered again. This time, however, the selected slot is one, so the scroll right function is called. The same exact thing goes for the other direction too. In case you're wondering why I test for all the slots and not only the two adjacent ones, if you're scrolling super fast or use the number keys to switch your selection, the system wouldn't always pick it up. This way it's absolutely fail safe and doesn't miss anything. I know this is a very specific system, but maybe some of you have an application, in which case this data pack hopefully saves you some time. And that's about it for today's video. Rather short one, but still wanted to put this out in hopes of helping some fellow map makers out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.